I'm Carrie Ambler and I work in two jobs as the CSO of Litox and I'm a professor of biosciences at Durham University. I'm Deb Leaves. I chair Atellerix. I'm also CEO of a medical software company and I also chair the Institute of Directors. Well, it's always nice to talk to Deborah. It's nice to talk about our pains, gains and successes, I think. Um, I think it's important to be able to talk about finance. I think sometimes, particularly women, I think might be more shy to actually talk about money. We do need to be able to ask for the money to be able to take our great ideas and go forward with them. I think it's one of those things which is really underestimated. Mm. How, how do you get a company going? Mm. Where do you get the funds from? Who's going to invest in you? And even when you have got the money, the real trick is cash flow. Absolutely. Because if you haven't got a good cash flow, it, it doesn't matter how wonderful your technology or your product is, you've got to balance the books. I absolutely came from a standing start when it came to understanding finance, particularly um, yeah. company finance, and that was such a steep learning curve. As long as you have that sort of basic understanding, if I don't get enough money coming in um, and more is going out, I'm going to have to get that fund from somewhere. How have you seen um, the changing access to finance, people's attitude to finance, particularly as a, as a woman? It is changing. It was hard. It was hard being a woman um, raising finance, but I've never been a man, so I don't know how difficult it would have been yes. for, for a man raising finance. We do know that women get funded less. Um, there are less female founders, less female CEOs, so it definitely must be harder. I think sometimes women hold back a bit too much. Um, if I mean, certainly in my early career, if I got a no from an investor, I took it at, you know, that was a no. And now I go back and find out why it's a no. Um, was there something in my pitch that they didn't like? It didn't meet their criteria? Um, do they want any more information? Uh, I think it's not giving up. And, and that's, I think that's actually a really interesting lesson to think about. You need to understand, dig down a bit more to understand what it is about um, that no. So sometimes it's just mismatch. People don't have, have yeah. interest in you. Maybe you're getting you're too small, you're too big. Um, and, and actually then understanding how to refine that pitch how to make it better, how to take feedback from that mm. um, and be able to take it forward. And I think I have learned that a little bit more, but again, it was hard. You do take things personally, particularly with me, with my first company, it is yeah. quite a moment of pride, right? So here's my first offering in the world in my own business plan and my own business ideas. And then to hear no's and mm. make sure you understand what that means yes. actually is, is, is a point of, um, a point of resilience, but also I think a real learning point. Mm. So, and sometimes, yeah. as you said, it, it wasn't anything to do with your, your pitch. Um, nope. It just wasn't a good match. So that particular VC, may only fund companies that want two million plus and you might have only wanted half a million um, or that particular VC has filled its portfolio now with life science companies and they have to go into agritech or something like that and then you start to build up a picture of all the VCs and you know who to pitch to um, for certain amounts of money. So how do you find raising finance locally? The best way to find out where they are is to talk to a network. Mm. So we've got Fund 10 North, we've got the Innovation Super Network. It's to talk to those people and say, who, who do I need to talk to who can put me in contact with the right sort of VCs or angel investors in my area? And they are so crucial to understanding the regional network. And I, I think you're absolutely right. So, you know, we at Litox actually did Venture Fest one year yeah. uh, with the Innovation Super Network, which was great. And again, it's a good networking opportunity because it is not always that first conversation, it's the 10th one that you have yeah. that, that you yeah. follow your way along. And yeah. so I think it is about being unafraid mm -hmm. to, to be able to articulate what you need. Mm -hmm. There are loads of places that you yes. just have to start, just start asking mm -hmm. and just seeing what you can come up with. And never forget telling anybody you're fundraising. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Never, and there's no shame. And there's no shame yeah. in saying we're looking for money, yeah. and because most people, <laughs> most companies are looking for money. <laughs> and we do yeah. in business. You always have to think about your cash flow mm -hmm. and where your next bit of money is yeah. going to come yeah. from. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, what's the future looking like for Litox? So we're at a really um, key stage. So our first drug. We are going through the last of the preclinical testing, which is really quite exciting. I know. Yeah. So. Um, 
and with that, we are looking to scale. So we are at the point where we're about to go for a major fundraising round. How okay. much are you trying to raise? Sorry. No, it's all right. We're about to raise about six million, and that should get us through the phase one, uh, phase two A trials. And how about you? What's your? The next stage for us, we're raising just one million, and the big plan is to fully commercialise the portfolio of products, That's and great. we're scaling up as well. Oh, how exciting. Yeah, very it's always excited. nice to be growth period time. Absolutely. I love Absolutely. this time.